the Irish Rising has happened, which I was shocked to see. I think most people were shocked to see that something finally happened. <laughs> well, In something Europe. terrible happened as well. Yeah, of course. So. But we shall begin this with just a, 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 a point of knowledge, I think, which is the, the American man, what does he fight for whenever you hear about in movies or mythology? Well, he fights for freedom, right? Mm -hmm. What about the English man? Well, he fights for king and country. Mm -hmm. And for the Irish, what was the whole purpose of the Irish rebellion, the Civil War, and the founding of independence? Ethnic autonomy. Yes. It was to determine their own future on an ethnic basis. That is the entire premise of the Irish state and the extension of the activities of the IRA into Northern Ireland. And so... It wasn't intersectionality? No. Right, okay. But it means Ireland's entire national mythology depends on a violent nativist revolt against foreigners who were oppressing and genociding them, in this case being the English, which is a hell of a setting for a country in general. But then give it the same circumstances that most Western European countries are facing, which is a mass movement of foreigners to ethnically change many of their cities and in the process induce quite a lot of violence from those groups against the natives. Everyone's been waiting or worrying about various far-right backlashes, as they would call it, across many European countries. And if there was anyone who would be able to have this kind of ethnic defense, I think it would be a country with that kind of national mythology. Mm. And this is the story. Because, I mean, never mind the I IRA era, like going all the way back to Ireland's founding, the modern state, I mean, what else could it be except an ethno state? Which is, you know, why it's so weird it ended up in left wing circles, as you can see here, yeah. being so uh, fetishized. But here we are. Here's um, the news, which has trickled out of Ireland over the last year or two years or so, I think, into the rest of the Anglosphere. You can see Lauren Southern making the point here that she went and interviewed people, and there is a mass movement of people into Ireland. Yep. And being a small population of only 7 million, when importing hundreds of thousands of people is a massive impact. Yeah. And the effects on housing, et cetera, are huge. Well, is it anything like what's happening in England? It is very much like that, mm, except on a faster scale because of the smaller population. It's I wanted huge. to just add a little bit there as well. This is something that I spoke to Eric Kaufman about. He documents this in White Shift. And I'm really glad that you raised the sort of ethnic consciousness of Ireland. This is something that Orwell observed back in Notes on Nationalism, where Celtic nationalism is an identity in opposition to the English. So they define themselves as a cohesive unit against the outsider. Kaufman said, a lot of the times you get a lot of arguments about immigration and we, we feel compelled to coach it on purely pragmatic terms. This is something that Farage said in the jungle about GP appointments and housing. Those are all very legitimate concerns. But also there is a dimension of ethnic and cultural change that is very taboo to talk about. And the Irish don't have this taboo. So you're now seeing it play out in the most violent means where the conversation has been suppressed. But this is a legitimate concern of the populace. And so you've now ended up in violence. It was wholly predictable. I, I think there's also another aspect to it because in Britain, the evolution of the left-wing argument has taken a long time, right? It's been like 30 years that this has been going on. And so we've had incremental stages. And that has kind of perfected itself in the last like four or five years. And then it gets transplanted wholesale to Ireland. So now the Irish are rendered as white supremacists, white oppressors, white institutions, white occupiers of a land. And they're not even white. And <laughs> that aside, um, and then so you bring in a bunch of foreign migrants. And it's like, right, well, you, you should surely have all of this white guilt, shouldn't you, Irish people? And it's like, of all of the people on earth, to not have guilt for being an oppressive race, it's the probably Irish. the Irish. Sorry, mate. Potato famine. F off. Yeah, and and just you know, Ireland was never the the people. They they were never the people controlling a colonial empire. They were the ones who were colonized. Mm. Uh, and so to take the framework that the left has developed to facilitate mass migration into um, dominant countries like England, France, Germany, somewhere like that, and try and apply that to Ireland. Obviously, that won't work. But also, I think they're looking at what's happened in England, France, and Germany. And we're like, right, and America, obviously. And so we can just funnel in tens of thousands of these every year, hundreds of thousands of these every year. And it's like, okay, maybe in a country that's like 70 million people, 50 million people, whatever, that probably works. Seven million. Well, yeah. The impact is immediate and massive. When you have a tiny country that does not have 
any of the history that the left can manipulate in order to make people be quiet about the issue. Um, it's no surprise that like, you know, this Ireland seems to be speed running the multicultural experiment is what I'm saying. And it's not appropriate for them, especially but also for nowhere else. To hammer this down, because of course, like we're not experts on the Irish politics or anything of the sort. It's just looking on the uh, state from the outside. But we can see very much similarity as to what's happened to us. I mean, this is some footage here of we see occasionally coming out of Ireland news of people being like, hang on a minute, what the hell's happened to Dublin? Why are there mass movements of fighting age men, thousands and thousands of them just turning up out of nowhere? Yeah. And it's like, huh, oh, yeah, that is, that is a bit weird. Uh, why is the prime minister now an Indian man saying that we need to replace white people within the institutions? As he puts it, he needs uh, targets to enforce the change in Ireland that it should become more ethnic minority, black and Asian. Has he got a Hamza Youssef clip? Not he, He's like the high judge, yeah, white. He doesn't explicitly say death to white people or anything of the sort. He instead just says, well, there should be targets to remove them. So he's taking the David Cameron position. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay. And this is a demographic question which is even weirder in Ireland because, of course, the argument is made for the English that, oh, well, you're all getting too old and dying out, therefore we need some foreigners to replace you because we need a workforce. But this doesn't even make sense because you can see here this is just ethnic data. And the white Irish being the, the Irish group here, you can see back in 2006, this doesn't go back far enough to show a full story, but it oh, shows they're, they're actually picture. growing. Yeah, you can see 3.6 million and they were 87% of the population. And then now it's 3.8 million. So the population does grow. It's yeah. working as intended. But yeah. as a proportion, it's fallen by 11%. Yeah. And you can see much of the wow. growth is in the white other category because, of course, Europeans. this isn't America. Uh, Europe functions on the basis of ethnic groups, not race. And Europeans aren't Irish. Irish are Irish. Yes. Also, their attractive low corporate tax policy has meant that a lot of places yeah. headquarters over there. And so you've had European and English people move over there for work. But obviously, that's been changing in the last couple of years because now everyone has to battery farm the north of Africa. And it, it goes on, as you can see here, the Indian population, well, I suppose the Raj population, we should say, which isn't recorded because it's so small and then jumps to like 2%. And it's like, okay, that's normal. And various other points in there. And they've tried political action, the Irish. We've seen various uh, images or marches. I've just picked one at random of, as you can see, some Irish patriots with their kids coming out saying, well, Ireland belongs to the Irish and the Irish alone. Who the hell else could it belong to? Literally, that's the basis of the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> the basis of Irish sovereignty entirely. Yeah. And the response has been to issue a hate speech declaration from the Indian it's. prime minister here, which is to... Well, to be, I, I just want to be clear, he's half Indian. Sure. But he thinks of himself as. In the same way, we have the problem with Rishi Sunak, which is the it's OK in our context, because at least we're the United Kingdom. We have an imperial heritage. The British state thinks in those terms. Yeah. So it's somewhat normal. But I uh, have this so fast upon the Irish state, which is based on ethnic Celtic, Catholic, well, supremacy, <laughs> essentially. Well, it's a bit more on the nose. Nationhood, I think, is the best way to put it. Yeah, but what's the basis of Irish nationhood? It wasn't oh, a multicultural state. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, ethnic particularity, obviously. Yeah, and a Catholic, Catholic green yeah. state, yes. not an orange one. I mean, this was yes. something that's now, so, so strange for us. Do you not remember Sinn Féin saying it was going to be a rainbow state? So we will get to that. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> but the response here being from the, uh, well, I suppose Dublin elite, because it has nothing to do with the Irish, in which they decided that they would pass a law where it would become a crime to say anything to a, uh, in person or online, which is derogatory to a protected category, race, yeah. religion, gender, sexuality, and they find it hateful or offensive. Of course, offense in the eye of the beholder is how this is defined. Now, the justice minister was asked, what is hateful speech? And he said, we all have an understanding of what hatred means. All right, so it's basically the same as the British one. We had that one up. Well, it's the same as the American Supreme Court's definition of pornography, which is, I can't describe it, but I know it when I see it. Yeah. Uh, the Garda have said that they will now have the right to search a laptop and phone for anything they deem offensive or hateful. This includes books you may have downloaded on your Kindle, which means uh, feminists, for example, who assert that a man um, is a man and a woman is a woman, and they're facing up to five years imprisonment. Right, so Helen Joyce would be imprisoned if she went home to her homeland. Yes. That's it's, mental. That's the law. It might not be at that point enforced yet, I don't know, but there's no reason it wouldn't become that. So the protected characteristics are, just to get this down, anyone who isn't the native heterosexual Irish. So that's the context, because the Irish are speed running. It's a very good yeah. way of putting it. The British experiment, what we've been going yeah. through. And the consequence has been that we'll shut down anyone who engages in political opposition. 
And so this sets the stage for what has happened over the weekend, which is some breaking news came out in which a suspected Algerian national stabbed some crash workers and some children. Uh, the casualties include three young children and an adult female and an adult male. One girl aged five has sustained serious injuries and is currently receiving emer emergency medical treatment. A boy age five and a girl age six are receiving medical treatment for less serious injuries. And the BBC has decided to tell us that they believe it is an Irish citizen who has been in the country for 20 years. Yeah, so just a quick thing. I was uh, following this story as it was developing yesterday, and a man is a suspect. And that's the closest I could find to a description, because in every other story, it was uh, something has occurred, focus on the victims, focus on the victims, focus on the victims. And there is no, essentially, I could have, if I could have walked away from this reporting basically thinking this had been an act of God. Well, I mean, I kind of like the framing here, as you can see in that headline. School stabbing, like some kids had stabbed each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no idea what's taking yeah. place. Yeah, and Sky News, you know, someone was injured in a stabbing. It's like someone was stabbed. You know? There wasn't a stabbing and you were, you know... A knife did not materialize out of the ether. Exactly, and you, were, you just happened to be uh, collateral damage in that, you know? So either way, the reporting is unclear. I, I'm not sure, and I don't think it's been released, confirmed as to what the suspect is, but it doesn't really matter because what happened was that you've got this setting of a stage, as I've just laid out, and even if it is false, and it is uh, an Irish chap who's decided to do this because he's mentally ill or something of the sort, the pressure has been boiling so much in the pot, it just burst. Yeah. And we can see it in real time here. And to get to that point, though, I'm not even 100% sure that makes sense, that if he's an Irish citizen of 20 years, that means he can't be ethnically Algerian. Because I was in Northern oh. Ireland recently, and there are a lot of Algerians from the French-Algerian War Living can, in Ireland, he can never stop being an Algerian. Yeah, it doesn't. Like everyone, your ethnicity is fixed. But also, even if he is an Algerian, the BBC are still confirming that he is a migrant. He's been yeah. there for twenty years, and even if it might well be a totally unrelated incident of mental illness, but it does prove that there are cultural tensions resulting from migration, which the government is clamping down on your ability to talk about. I mean, even if that's not the case, this isn't the point. This uh, is all things. I mean, the man who was uh, burnt to death or beaten to death in Tunisia that led to the revolution there, it wasn't about the fruit seller who was beaten to death. It was to do with the system that had been oppressing people for so long that they just had enough. It was the catalyst, yeah. And, and it's, it's a weird defense. Well, oh, he's been there for 20 years. It's like, that makes it worse, actually. So moving on to the news in this, um, apparently the crash worker seems to be an absolute hero. They, they write in here, this heroic woman is being treated for a serious stab injury to her body that she suffered when she tackled the knifeman. Good on it, you, love. It is understood that she uh, could only intervene after the attacker had stabbed a five-year-old girl in the neck. So Jesus. she tried to sacrifice herself to save the rest and, and good on her. Everyone seems to be being, being treated and I hope they all live. But the immediate responses. So a Labour Party... Senator came out and decided to tell everyone that she's calling for peace. The thing is, after Israel-Palestine, that has changed the dialectic in the English language so much. The rhetoric of don't look back in anger. Sorry, she looks like she's suppressing a goddamn smile. Yes. She's, what the hell? I, I don't know what she's saying, but like, why do you look like you're desperate to grin and you've got to force your face to hide it? Also, why are you... Presuming that you have anything relevant to say and in inserting yourself into the situation of a tragedy, other than to act as pure narrative containment. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, yeah, not yeah. your place. Well, that isn't really why it ended up happening, because some people have noticed that, of course, Ireland had a big, long relationship with uh, pro Palestinian stuff. Yeah. I don't really want to get into it too much, but if you do have that and import people who support it so much, um, maybe some things will go wrong, which is what they found out. And uh, there's a whole other conversation to be had about how the Israel-Palestine stuff fits into the Irish experience. But oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my main point being, after what happens with Israel-Palestine, and nobody asked Israel to not look back in anger, that dialectic's dead. At least in the West for now. Yeah. So, what happened? Well, immediately, footage of people chanting, get them out. Whilst rioting on the street there. Douglas Murray seen fleeing the scene. They uh, began fighting with the police on the street, as you can see here. Yep. Physically beating the crap out of them and then stealing their riot shields to beat the crap out of them. So, quick thing here: Why would they be fighting the police? Well, there's a new, there's a new worldview there, isn't there? Which is, we've always been oppressed by the English. The English are our enemy. They're the ones mm -hmm. trying to replace us by causing the famine or importation or whatever. Yeah. Well, now what? <sighs> now what exactly? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, I can only assume that these people are fighting the police because they assume 
that the police are going to be in defense of migrants, a foreign group, according to the Irish Patriots, rather than in defense of the children who have been stabbed. Yeah. Well, they also decided to burn a bus, as you can see here. Yep. That's, that's a thing that happened with the word out. One observation that has been made as well is that why should they think, considering everyone has a smartphone and they can see videos of the last couple of years constantly, that the police would put up any kind of fight? Because in 2020, every single city in America stood by and allowed these riots to happen. Yep. So if there is a racial reckoning happening now in Ireland, well, the police are just getting in the way of their rightful expression of resentment. I mean, it happened over here. The, the racial reckoning on, of George Floyd was happening in London. And for some reason, the police just stood by and let that happen as well. So, Well, this is the Irish Lives Matter movement, you could say, as they burn police cars in response to some children being stabbed. And uh, uh, they go on. You can see here they're shouting the police. This is Leo's fault. You should be with us. So This is on. very similar to the Senator protest where the police started attacking the yeah. football lads before yep. the football lads done anything, and the football lads were chanting rather powerfully, you let your country down. Now, I'm not endorsing any wanton acts of criminality. I'm merely saying that if the establishment doesn't look like it's on the side of the people it purports to serve, and you suppress the conversation that allows them to raise their grievances in a peaceful way, don't be shocked when they turn to this. It's interesting to see, because there's been such minimal or even impossible way to democratically make change to the way that the system works in all these European nations. What they're left with is believing that the government is completely illegitimate, in which case, well, as you correctly say, as we can see here, some people apparently setting fire to the Holiday Inn Express Hotel because it's being used to house migrants there. And uh, this is a much larger problem, as I mentioned earlier, that there's a massive, massive housing shortage in Ireland because of the immigration. Mm. And the hotels are also a symbol of corruption in this case. Right. Bad enough in our example where we rented all the five-star hotels to put foreigners in. Yep. Now, in Ireland, quite a lot of the politicians own the hotels. Really? They're the ones making the money of all this. So they're not burning down the hotels necessarily because, oh, we hate people of a different ethnic group. That's not the point. This has become a symbol of the elite's oppression and profiteering of making the Irish worker poorer. Mm. You now have less ability to buy housing, which means you have no ability to build up capital. And the people profiting off that are your politicians. I can Who are bringing in thousands and thousands of foreigners to, to make housed at your expense to their profit. It's a modern plantation. And it goes on. Um, this is the Sky News reporting here on what happened, their response. I hate Sky News. Far-right protests after girl five among the three children attacked. Yeah, okay. No, okay, that's fine. Yeah, if, if, if you're concerned about a foreigner who stabs a bunch of children, you're far-right. You got me. God bless them. You got me. Uh, this is what they expect, or at least wanted from your response, I suppose. Some, they, did they really expect the Irish population? No, they, 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 they were going to roll out the don't look back in anger narrative. Yeah, like they did for Reading. Yeah. The, these things just happen, you see. It just happens. An Algerian comes over 20 years and then goes and stabs a bunch of kids. No one could have predicted it. No one could have controlled it. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's literally like a volcano erupted, right? And, you know, Pompeii has been buried in ash. Don't look back in anger. But the more realistic version of Don't Look Back in Anger is exactly this meme, and that's why I've presented it. I love it. Which is the point that they want you to sit there and be like, oh, this is a strength that Manchester Arena just got bombed. Well, they want you to be like a battered housewife, which yeah. is essentially, don't cause the volatile constituency that we've imported here to kick off by putting your culture in their face. All you have to do is be quiet enough and don't antagonize them, and then multiculturalism will win out and there'll be no more conflict. It's actually your fault for just living. I saw Aaron McIntyre, he had a response. People being angry at the government keeps importing strangers to murder their children is actually good. He never misses. Yeah. Moving on. You can see this is the damage, at least reported, which is a, a tram, three buses, some police vehicles, and some shops. Zero deaths. Um, people get iffy about violence, but there's. I remember reading a thread about what does violence actually mean in terms of a, a revolution to overthrow a government. And Ukraine is such an interesting example for this. I remember reading a thread from a Ukrainian who helped organize the overthrow of the government there because they were going towards pro-Russia and they didn't want it. And one of his main points is you never kill a policeman, never kill any protesters, just cause damage and such. And because that causes such destabilization, the elite completely lose morale. And I'm wondering if that's where this is going to be ending up going. I suppose we'll see, but certainly no one should be harmed. I don't think the Irish response. elite is entrenched in this new paradigm as our elites or American elites are as well. I don't, I don't think they've got the kind of fortification and security that they'll need to endure this kind of rebellion. 
But definitely they on... do have belief because we'll check out with Sinn Fein. They issued a response to this. Uh, Sinn Fein's Matt Cathy tells uh, this outlet that uh, prime time that the rioters do not represent the people of North Inner City Dublin. I suppose who does? He adds that the rioters need to be held to account for their their unjustifiable actions. Says Sinn Fein. Sinn Fein over here. I know. It's just... The, the political wing of the IRA, the terrorist group that I grew up having to hear about every goddamn day. Like, the green Celtic nationalist rioters are unjustifiable, says Sinn Féin. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, to remind people how this happened, this is Sinn Féin, as you can see here. Yeah. So this is uh, Michelle over here, who tells everyone she's building a society not of orange and green, but a whole rainbow of cultures of multiculturalism. Yeah. So Sh Sinn Féin have become traitors to the Irish people. Right. Yeah, I mean, they've become left-wing wokeists. This probably hasn't happened too long ago either, but now it's wokeism wearing a Sinn Féin skin suit. But I love that, unironically, Sinn Féin's position is um, F Ireland. Bobby Sands was far right. I, I just yeah, yeah. Michael Collins was unjustifiable in his actions, and uh, James Connolly was a thug. Great, cool. That's just finally arrived in the British position. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just got bored of not having a religious conflict to do for a while, so they just Maybe. a brand new one. Yeah. Maybe. And I'll, I'll skip through these real quick. You can see here a lot of responses from people who are living in Ireland, but don't identify Ireland as their country, are really confused, as they say here. That, Has um, she got a flag in her bio at all? Uh, not this one, but there are quite a few who have flags in their bios, as you can see. Yeah. They're saying, get them out. Who Get who act, exactly. And the very same people who live here and have a right to be here, just like you. Well, Where does this right originate from? Well, I just, I'm thinking... You've just literally arrived off a plane. I've got a right to live in Ireland. Says who? By virtue of the Says ability... Says Sinn Féin because they hate the Irish. What do you want? By virtue just... of the ability to travel, they think it's a right. Yeah, no, get out. I'm just thinking of the English <laughs> plantations, though. Yeah, sorry. Really... No, we've got just as much right to Ireland as anyone does. I've got a work visa. I've got... <laughs> <laughs> just... Okay. Unbelievable. Someone responding, my greatest fear is if a foreigner stabbed a bunch of Irish school children... Because imagine the blowback against peaceful migrants. I miss Norm. Yeah. It goes on. This chap here. You know, Algerian migrant in yeah, uh, Ireland stabs five people. She ended up privating her account because lots of people like, um, that's not really the problem since those white Irish men didn't kill anyone uh, whereas, or even stab anyone or hurt anyone. But uh, anyway. For people listening, the journalist is tweeting out, uh, I tell you what I'm scared of in Dublin right now, white Irish men. Not the guy who's stabbing kids. Right. Cool. Single, childless female journalists. Awful. Here's the Irish media. They decided to go with um, hate on the streets. Okay. Not hate in the schools. They're not talking not about... in the schools, not blood in the schools. No, not the murderer. No. Now, the murderer is not the hateful one. He's, he's the, not part of the story at all. The green Celtic nationalists. They're, they're, they're the real enemy of Ireland. Injured, child injured in blade frenzy. Oh, just a whirlwind turned up with kitchen I, knives involved. I just so hate it when knives start raining from the heavens. Yeah. It's not surprising either. A lot of people were able to point out that these people who are uh, annoyed or at least uh, angered by the Irish nationalists were all supporting BLM. It's like clockwork, sincerely. Yeah, hang on a second. Aren't the police a bunch of racist oppressors anyway? Not the Garda, though. Right, okay. Because they're helping what we want. I did like Dankula's response, which is, wow, it looks nice and peaceful. <laughs> he did go a bit further in this, which is probably the spiciest response. What's an acceptable number of stabbed and raped children before we are allowed to get really angry and admit that the whole immigration thing might not be in our best interest? Yeah, I just want the number. Just there isn't one. It's limitless. Because exactly. they, they are arrogant exactly. enough to think that if they just suppress your culture for long enough, there will be no conflict. Exactly. There, there is no number because they don't care. And this whole dialectic in the Irish context, I think, has just so skew, skew with, it has blown up massively. I mean, I'm yeah. talking to the level of visibility all of these tweets alone never mind the story internationally has gotten and this leads into someone who is uh well <sighs> just a bit of a no-name irishman really isn't he the new mma nationalist of the world conan connor mcgregor over here who has decided to set the world ablaze as you how can many, see how many followers does conor mcgregor have on twitter what's the population of ireland so the population of ireland is seven million so more than all of ireland follows conor mcgregor 15 million views on this tweet alone. Okay, good, good. Uh, the police decided to respond to this, saying there were disgraceful scenes in Dublin. Uh, what were the disgraceful scenes? The hooligan faction driven by far-right ideology. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. I saw a lot of people suggesting that somehow Roger Scruton was behind this. Which, uh, eh? yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, you might think an English conservative isn't the traditional ideolog ideologue of the average Irish man, but it turns out that he is. 
But do you want to read out Connor's, Connor's tweet here? Which Sure. Innocent children, Ruth, I can't do the accent, obviously. Ruthlessly stabbed by a mentally deranged non-national in Dublin, Ireland today. Our chief of police had this to say on the rights in the aftermath. Drew, not good enough. There is great danger among us in Ireland that should never have been here in the first place. There has been zero action done to support the public in any way, shape, or form with this, frank, uh, from, with this frightening act. fact. Not good enough. Make change or make way. Ireland for the victory. God bless those attacked today, we pray. Why, why, why did none of our public figures say something like that? Ever. Because they've never been in a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. He went on. Someone asked what happened <laughs> to him. And the uh, economy responds, torture and death. I, I decided to reply to that with just uh, the only thing I felt appropriate. <laughs> yes, definitely true. And, um, you, know, I, I, you know, I do believe in capital punishment, but yep. I think it probably yeah. should go further. He is right. Uh, if you're going to put someone like that to the sword or the rope. I don't, I don't think torture, that, that demeans us, but, uh, but definitely a public hanging of someone who stabs a bunch of children. I Absolutely. think hung, drawn, and quarter is, is... No, that's fine. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. That is torture. And, um, well, what else do you do with child murderers? So, he went on. Uh, what would Daniel O'Connell say? I wonder what would our Irish leaders of the past say about the situation we face today? God bless Ireland. I don't think they'd have much ni- not, not much to say that would be very nice. He also tweets out, Ireland, we are at war. 15 million views on that one. I would like to see him run for office. I would love to see Conor McGregor president of Ireland. He does also go on to um, have the correct opinion of the journos here. Oh, yeah. So this is a oh, series yeah. of journos who turned up to the stabbing site and like then vultures, yeah. a patriot goes up to them and confronts them because he knows his individuals. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, eight months ago you were tweeting about the far right of the real threat to Ireland. Now what? Yeah. Now what exactly? And of course they're all just cowardly as uh, Connor correctly points out, weak and feeble. Mm. The most divisive of all is the weak man. One of the most horrific crimes in this nation has occurred. We do not care anymore about your sad cases. Have got to say, in a war, you are nothing. We are not backing down. He goes on and on. Yeah, yeah, and he's totally right. And um, the thing I find amazing about all of that is it's definitely true, and from an English perspective, it is kind of weird, talking to the Irish uh, viewers here, that... Not only is it a betrayal of everything that everyone fought in the Easter Rising, the Civil War, and then even the Troubles, mm. it's kind of a betrayal of our dead in the Troubles as well. Because what was the point in us fighting the Irish nationalists there at all, if this is what you were going to do to yourselves? You're just going to give your country away. I mean, it's sort of, a, you're not only spitting on your own dead, you're spitting on our dead in a way. Every battle we've ever had is completely pointless. If this is the future of Ireland instead, which is you become, what? part of the international world that's all you are a province of the eu or whatever ideology is exactly leading the, the global homogeneous empire of the west if ireland doesn't remain irish then literally all of our history was pointless with each other and and from that perspective i think the unbelievable has happened which is the english and the irish are now very much in support of one another no more brother wars sincerely but we'll end this off with just a quick shill. If you would like to support us, you can go and check out our merch as well and go and buy some. And it is the last day in which you can get the discount code of 12.5% off if you're a member. If you do go demonstrate in Ireland, please don't wear our t-shirts doing it. No, you can wear the uh, Wellington one. Being born in a stable does not make one a horse. I think there's a lot of truth in that. A word from the boss. Anyway, that's all. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site such as the premium videos, this one on the politics of Life is Strange. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.